Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. It's Dr. Allen. He's going to talk about pregnancy, and he's going to give us some amazing information and facts you probably didn't even realize. But before we get, begin, I want to just give a quick shout out to DMAWorld.com. They are a company that does marketing consulting, and they help people so they don't get scammed by the big marketing companies. They want to help the small businesses, and they want them to evolve into to strong businesses that profit and do well. And today I wanted to just let you know, they are doing a free seminar and it's, it's at 30waystomarket.com. And you can go on there and you can sign up for their seminar. That's 30waystomarket.com. So right now I want to go back to Dr. Allen because I'm very excited to have him on the show today. So Dr. Allen, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Well, I'm newly retired. I'm 75 years old, which makes me older than most of the people on the planet. But I, I'm enjoying retirement. I started out on a small farm in North Dakota. I got my medical degree in 77. I went to um, the University of Minnesota, which is where I got my residency in obstetrics and gynecology. And until about a year ago, I practiced obstetrics and gynecology. I was a, eventually got to be an associate professor of clinical uh, practice at the University of North Dakota. And I taught a lot of students and residents uh, to do obstetrics in rural North Dakota. So that's how I got here. <laughs> well, you know, you have such information that, that we were just talking about before the show that I thought was so interesting. We were talking about pregnancy. And you were talking about how during pregnancy, so many things are imperative. They're so important that people don't even realize when you're carrying a child, it's, you know, the, the way you, you talk, the way, the things you do, what you eat, every little thing has an effect when that child is in you and, and developing inside you. Can you tell people about when they start pregnancy and, and how it affects the baby and how the baby picks up on all these little things that people probably don't even realize? Well, yes, thank you, Stacy. Uh, this is a good opportunity. Babies can see and hear a lot more than we give them credit for. And I would say that certainly before 20 weeks, they can hear and they can see, they know light and dark. And they like music. They like especially classical music. They like to hear moms and dads talk. They like to be read to. As a matter of fact, I think some of them even recognize me and my voice when they come back to see me. So, yes, babies can take on a lot from their environment. And one of the things I think it's really important during pregnancy, take the opportunity to be positive, you know, to keep the attitude of gratitude. You've written about this. This is one of your topics. It's one of my topics. You know, uh, a lot one of the things I really want to get across to my audience and your audience is that choice is very important. Um, we have um, a book we've written. Our book is called um, Pregnancy Your Way, meaning that you can steer or drive your pregnancy. You can choose to be positive. And so we have written the subtitle is Choose a Safe and Happy Birth. So a lot of times, Moms get uh, uptight about prenatal care and they've got financial worries and they have all kinds of worries, but it really helps during prenatal care uh, if you can bring your husband, your kids, so that your doctor can help you um, have a positive attitude. So yes, I think I have been able to steer a lot of moms in the right and dads in the right direction. And I've delivered about 6,000 babies with no wow. mortality. So, yeah, it's been fun. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, I it was funny because when you were talking about all little things that could affect pregnancy, you know, it's so funny because I have three children and I was different between with every child. The first child, I ate so healthy. I wanted to do everything right. It was vegetables galore and everything nutritious. The second one, I was a little lax at days ago. For some reason, I was always craving a bagel with cream cheese and jelly. 
And the third one, I, and I also drank coffee when I shouldn't have drank coffee, but it was like a craving. I had to have a cup every day. And the third one, I was just like pepperoni and salami. I like one day I sent my husband out like three o'clock in the morning. I was like, I want pepperoni and salami. And there was like a little convenience store, like down the block from us. I actually paid, made that poor man go down the block and, and get me pepperoni and salami. And, and <laughs> when the children were born, the foods I ate a lot of have become their favorite foods. So the first one is totally nutritious. He likes all veggies. And the second one is all, loves her cream cheese and jelly on a bagel. The third one, you know, just loves all the Italian food, the salami, the pepperonis. And it's so funny because those are the things I did during pregnancy. So it kind of, it kind of correlates to what you're saying that the things that we do, the thing, how we act really does play a role on the development of the child. You're absolutely right, Stacy. And of course, it, when I'm listening to you talk about what you ate, everything that you've eaten has been good for you and good for the baby. It's not that you have had um, food that you know you shouldn't be eating. All these things are good food. So I'd say, and that's one of my what I tell everybody is, you know, eat what you feel like eating uh, because it's better to eat than not to eat. And right. the, you're gonna, it's gonna all turn out okay anyway so right and you know i i love how you talk about how you know how it's important to read during pregnancy and and how the, the mother hear the child's voice is there a bonding that happens like did, when the child consistently hears the mother's voice is it you know they say sometimes it's the bonding when the mother first holds a child but if you're consistently reading and talking does that child absorb that voice and the bond is actually taking place in the womb as the child is developing well, I think it's one of the most important things that sometimes we forget. But yes, you have put the <laughs> hit the nail on the head there. Um, I think that not only do babies get to know their mom's voices, but they know their dad's voices. And like I said, I think some of them even recognize my voice. So yes, uh, education starts in the uterus. That's amazing. Now, tell me a little about your book, because I want to hear about your book, Pregnancy Your Way. Can you tell me a little about that? Well, we talked about this before, that birth defects will affect between 5 and 3%, meaning that 95 to 97% of moms don't have to worry about birth defects. So uh, positivity is really important. You know, accent the positive, and that means Again, I think we can start on that. The The doctors can set the stage for that during the pregnancy. You know, unfortunately, we have um, in our country, our maternal mortality rate is increasing, not decreasing. And our biggest problem right now is what we call behavioral. And in that group, suicides, homicides, and drug overdose. But I think we can make a huge difference during prenatal care to avoid all of that. I've never had any mom succumb to any of those problems. So I think that, you know, it doesn't matter whether the doctor feels uh, guilty about it or they are missing, we are missing an opportunity to do good things for good people if right. we don't take that opportunity. So, yeah. We can avoid those things. So what's the difference between if if, it, if you exemplify more positive behavior during your pregnancy, what's the difference if someone behave, acts more negatively and is consistently talking negatively or exemplifying negative behavior versus someone who is positive and happy all the time? And, you know, is there any studies or anything that you know of that, you know, positivity versus negativity? Well, yes. Thank you for that. I just read an article this morning the NIH, the National Institute for Health. And uh, we have thought that that was a good institution, you know, intelligent. Yeah. But they have said that a positive pregnancy, that is one that's calm with a positive attitude, is associated with babies, with children and, and babies who are not only smarter, but they have fewer behavioral problems. So they're better adjusted. The other thing is that, you know, having had three children yourself, you realize that taking a new baby home can be a problem, especially if you think your life is going to be 
the same as it was before because it isn't it'll never be the same but you have to also recognize and this is how we can help moms and dads prepare during the pregnancy get them ready to go home and they make that adjustment better in other words they can have the attitude this isn't going to be the same but it's going to be better so right. i think that's yeah that's helpful and i think too also when you have that baby the the behaviors that you exemplify and how you treat that child from day 1 it, you know even even you know it, it, it plays a big toll on the, the, how they're going to grow up as a child, their mindset, I think, too. You know, we have to really, sh you know, in order for a child to know how to love, we have to exemplify love. In order for a child to be positive, we have to exemplify positivity. And for a child to be strong, we have to not enable them, but yet teach them in a way that they will learn positive, you know, there are consequences for their negative behavior and then teach them correctly on how to exemplify um, behavior that's positive and not yell at them or not, you know, give them the, you know, you know, make them fearful of you, but actually make them look up to you as a mentor and then copy your behavior. And then you have to realize that, I think, and become that mentor that you want your children to be also. Well, yes, that's exactly right. Positive, a, a kind, positive attitude really helps your children grow up to be kind and positive people. Yeah, I, you know, are, is there any suggestions that you give to mothers who are pregnant if they want, you know, the best, the best way for a, a pregnant mother to have a, a healthy, happy and positive experience during those nine months? Is there any suggestions that you want, some tips you might want to give them that will help them during their pregnancy and maybe even help the child itself? Yes, I think one of the most important things is that moms and dads know that baby is healthy. And there's a very simple thing that you, moms can do to know that baby is healthy. And that is what I call the non-stress test um, or a kick test. So in order to do that test, I would tell moms, so it's called the left lateral decubitus. And that means that you're lying not on your back and not on your left side, but in between. Okay. So the second half hour after they're done eating, for example, if they're done eating at noon, then from 1230 to one, they lie on their left side and they count the baby's movements. And if there's 10 movements, and this is one movement, but that's two movements. And I explain all of that. This test costs absolutely nothing, but it helps them decide every day, they can do the test every day that their baby is healthy and they know the baby is healthy and they think healthy all day long, all the time. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if they, they're supposed to get 10 kicks in 30 minutes and most of the time they get 10 kicks in 10 minutes. So as soon as they get 10 kicks, the test is done, but it also helps if they need, if they're finding that they don't have 10 kicks, it helps them decide to call the doctor or to go in to the hospital for further checking. So that's a very practical thing uh, that every mom can do at home. That sounds really interesting. Um, now, are there other exercises that, that parents can do? Like, you know, because life itself could be very stressful. And, you know, as much as we want to avoid stress, it, it's 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 almost impossible. You know, we have our ups and downs, like, you know, some good days, some bad days. And for, for a parent, especially a pregnant mother, you know, 70% illnesses are caused by stress alone. Now, for a pregnant mother, you put yourself in a more dangerous position for you and the baby if you can can't cope with your stress positively. So are there any suggestions that you would give people who are pregnant that sometimes people are more anxious, sometimes people are going through tough times, whatever the case may be, how could they positively deal with their stress so that it doesn't affect them and the baby? Well, yes, thank you. And I think one of the most important things is a diary. Um, and yes, you can write in your diary every day if you want to. And you have to remember that the attitude of gratitude. So if you can write down something, you know, one thing or two things that you're thankful for, like, uh, you know, the sun came up today, yeah. uh, it's a beautiful day, uh, I'm healthy, I'm happy. 
something positive. And that really helps moms uh, stay calm and happy during yeah. pregnancy. The attitude of gratitude, you know, uh, like your book. <laughs> attitude, really important. Yeah. Now, I was curious, is is when you exemplify certain behaviors during pregnancy, can those behaviors be transferred to your child? Can your child from the behaviors, because your child can see and hear. So if it's hearing you, um, and you know, um, and and it's it's absorbing your behaviors, you know, through its through its hearing process, can it actually, you know, because you you become who you are in your environment? Can you actually entice the, you know, kind of your child can be molded into your behaviors by what it's hearing while you're pregnant? Not only what it's hearing and seeing, but what it's feeling is really important. And that's where the, like I said, gratitude is important and positivity and calm and yeah. thankfulness. These are all things that really help, I think, babies come into the world um, in their own calm way. And, you know, it, it works uh, before pregnancy. It works after pregnancy. You know, there are ways that you can hold a child that tell it it's it's the world is good. And mm -hmm. there are activities, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that tells your child that things are not so good. So, right. Um, calm. I love the fact of journaling. I, I'm a big fan of journaling. I think I think it's great because you're when you're able to write things down on paper, you know, some because sometimes people don't like to verbally express how they're feeling inside, but to be able to write it on paper and then also to to write what you're your, you know, what you have gratitude for. I think sometimes we take for granted the things we have. And unfortunately, some people don't realize, you know, how valuable the things are in their lives until it God forbid it's taken away from them. And then they realize wow, you know, I, I should have been, you know, have more gratitude and more appreciation for this, that, and the other thing. And I think when you write things on paper and just maybe even make a list of things you have, you have gratitude for, even the grass we walk on or the air we breathe, and then maybe even, you know what I'm th just thinking, maybe even say these things out loud. If you write a list of things you gratitude, have gratitude for while you're pregnant, if the baby's listening to you and you kind of teach your child while you're pregnant, can you, is that kind of true? I think it's a wonderful idea, um, you know, the calm that you're talking about and the um, the good start. It's a, it's a real healthy start for baby. So, yeah, I'd say go ahead. And, and the other thing I was thinking about, and I have recommended this, is two uh, diaries. In other words, you don't want to take your most sensitive thoughts to the doctor's office. Right. On the other hand... Uh, you, there may be something that you want to talk with your doctor about. And of course, today, in a 15 minute visit, the doctor will see you for five minutes and spend mm -hmm. 10 minutes on the chart. So that doesn't leave you a lot of time. But if you can write down, you know, maybe two or three things in your diary, in your doctor, the one that you bring to your doctor. Yeah. Uh, then you will at least get those things done and you don't have to worry about forgetting something. But remember that the doctor will not have time to to bring up or to answer 10 questions. It's just right. not possible in today's environment. Yeah, unfortunately. I remember when I, I, I would go to the doctor, I always said to myself, I'm going to be my own doctor. And I would I would write a list of questions and I would write a list of concerns and I would have everything well prepared before I went in to make sure that I covered everything. And, I, you know, and we just like went through it really quickly. And, you know, if there was anything else, you know, I would, you know, either have a televisit or, you know, we continue our conversation, you know, at, at a other time. But unfortunately, the way healthcare is today, you know, when I was pregnant, you know the doctor spent a lot of time with me but nowadays I hear from many people and even doctors today that I see you know some of them are like unfortunately you know I I have to go you know we can't you know because they're they're expected to be in you know see a patient and after that 15 minute time like you said you know they have to go to the next patient which isn't really fair but that's a whole different discussion for us to have in a different <laughs> different uh, episode but 
you know, I would always make a list of things and I would always say, I'm going to be my own doctor. And then I would confirm with the doctor and see what was a myth, what would not to worry about, what suggestions you have about this. And then, you know, and, and do it that way, because we tend to forget a lot of things if we don't write them down. So I think it's always great to have lists. Do you like that idea? I think it's a wonderful idea. The other thing that's really, I think, good when, for an appointment time, I never had patients get undressed. So because you feel vulnerable sitting there half dressed in a lot of times it's cold and and so if people if women and for that matter men come in and they get to talk with you while they have their clothes on it's yeah. going to be easier for you there and it's going to be easier to ask the questions that you have on your mind and to get answers so uh, i think that from the very beginning you have to the doctor has to communicate calm and peace. And one thing you can't do is this, you know, while you're trying to talk to a patient because, yeah. you know, that's a sign that the conversation is done. It's, uh, you know, I, I feel like, you know, body language is a big thing. And then like, not everybody understands body language, but I would always, I always knew a lot about body language because the topic always interested me. And once that person crossed their arms, like you just showed, basically it's like, all right, you know, they set their opinion. That's it. You know, they're closed off and, you know, it's, you know, it's, you know, especially you don't want to see a professional doing that and you don't want to see the patient either because, you know, I, I'm sure doctors kind of pick up on different personalities and behaviors and they, they can pick up on the body language themselves also. And, and really you have to have a, a certain type of friendship, I think, with the doctor, a good communication with your doctor. You know, I always felt like, you know, I could talk to my doctor about anything. And you know what, if you don't feel like that, then you should find yourself a different doctor because you really need a doctor that you feel comfortable with that you can confide in and that you could be honest with too. I think honesty is key because a doctor can't understand and help you unless you're honest. And, and I think people are like, I would hear comments a lot of times from patients because I work with a lot of patients and they're like, well, the doctor doesn't understand me. They don't know what I'm going through, but you know what? You have to communicate so the doctor can understand. And then the doctor can give you advice from a medical perspective. But unless you are explaining and you you give you know a clear, defined explanation, the doctor is not going to be able to help you. And you can't have that negative attitude like we we're talking about have to have that positive attitude and okay, the doctor is not going through pregnancy and the doctor is not going through this, but let me explain from my side what I'm going through and let's see from a medical perspective what the doctor can do to help you. Well, yes, body language is, like you said, really important. It can stop or start conversations. You know, the other thing I tried never to do was to try to, to get to the door. You know, I have my hand on the doorknob. So there's a lot of ways you can... Um, invite conversation and there's also a lot of ways that you can turn it off but yeah. calm and peace and being receptive are very important parts of being a physician and giving people the opportunity to talk and communicate yes I think that's so important and when we were talking about um, stress and relaxing um, are there any types of meditation or yoga stretches that a, a person who's pregnant can do to kind of help them along? Well, yes, um, there are, certainly are. I don't do yoga myself and I haven't thought about it a lot, but uh, I do know that sitting quietly, uh, you know, your feet on the floor in your chair and closing your eyes and just thinking about good things. I think that in calm, I think those are very important for moms. Sometimes it's a matter of just getting up a little earlier. Um, I think morning time seemed to be a good time for contemplation, for yoga, for thinking. Um, there are also people who think in terms of a light, you know, inside, yes. um, mm -hmm. in their chest. Yes. So those are some of the things, but I think that calm is really important. And that's something that I think you can, I, as a, as a physician, have always tried to give to my patients. I have a video and it's free and it's quads. My, I had, I delivered four, mom had four babies. 
okay. at, at one time. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and she was uh, very um, eloquent. She really can explain. She works for a newspaper, so she knows how to talk. And we recently had a book launch, and she was there with the uh, three of the four children. They're all living, by the way, and they're now 25 years old. Oh, wow. And she's always kept us informed about birthdays and graduations. And so now their their son, they had three girls and a boy, their son is getting married. So we're getting an invitation to that. But anyway, that is free. And it's on YouTube if you ever want to watch it. Oh, I'd love that. Do you have a YouTube channel? Let's see. Diane. Oh, Rural Doc Allen is it, yes. And I can send you the the link if you want. Yeah, um, we'll put all the links in the description so everybody will have access to it. Well, that sounds great. We're um and of course our book is available at Amazon. It's uh Pregnancy Your Way, and you have to have Lindemann behind it, or you get a 40 other pregnancy books. So pregnancy your way. Um at Amazon. Yes. Now, before we go, I just want a couple of tips for parents. So, you know, there's so many parents now having children later in life, and there are parents who have illnesses and conditions and they're having pregnancies. And a lot of parents worry about how the child is going to turn out. Is there going to be any possible defects is, you know, what, you know, and all the other things that go through it or parents who have had miscarriages and in the past that are prone to miscarriages and they get pregnant and all these worries are going in their head about what if, what if, you know, and I always say, let's live in the now and take it day by day and we'll worry about an issue if it comes along, but that's easier said than done. And it takes a lot of and to get to that point. So what are your suggestions for people who have obstacles to endure during their pregnancies? How would you suggest that they handle it? Well, it's really complicated and thank you for bringing that up. But one of the things, let's just start talking about what you're familiar with is epilepsy. Mm -hmm. uh, I have had many moms who've had epilepsy and the, the really the good news is that there are two medications which are very useful for this and one of them is called Lamictal and that's mm -hmm. the generic name or the brand name and Kepra is the other one so yes the thing about it is get beyond the right medication if you think yes. that you are uh, you know if you're of the age to become pregnant or possibly getting pregnant there are yes. also moms who've had many miscarriages. And I had a big practice, an infertility practice for many years, moms who'd had a series of miscarriages. And some of them, mo I would say about two thirds of them had a reason. And the reason was a simple bacterium, which required a simple antibiotic. So many yeah. of them from 25 wow. weeks, which is difficult to 35 weeks and a live baby. So there are actually things that can be done. And I'd recommend if you are one of those people who have a lot of miscarriages, go find a doctor who is willing to look at all of the possible options and try to give you a fresh start. Wow, that's really great advice. And that really surprised me, you know, uh, of the, of the uh, you know, the constant miscarriages that people can endure that they're more prone to. The simple reason could be, you said, the bacterium in the, in the person. And, you know, I have never heard a doctor or anybody give that conclusion. And I think sometimes doctors, you know, it's, you need a doctor that really keeps up on these things. And I always suggest if you have any problems or any kind of medical issues or you, you know of that, you should probably find a doctor who specializes in that area. So they're well educated and they're, they're on top of things. They probably know the best solutions. And because all doctors are different and all doctors have their own specialties and you really should find a doctor, I guess, that fits your your needs. Well, thank you. You know, I never planned on having that kind of a practice, but it, it turns out word of mouth, you know. Right. You have a few patients who have good results and they send in their friends and they send in their friends. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And it just grows. Yep. Wow. That's amazing. This whole conversation has been amazing. I hope that you'll come back on the show because I really 
enjoyed having you on the show. And I, I learned a, a whole bunch of information. There's so many mothers out there that, you know, have so many questions, go through so many, you know, issues. And, you know, someone like you could actually really help somebody, you know, understand the importance of how they should look at life and how they should, things they should do during pregnancy and then even after pregnancy and, and ways that they could have a, a positive impact on their child. Because when you have children, you just want the best for that child from the, from day one, from the day the baby is conceived, you know, you, you want, you want the very best for that child and, you know, and understanding what happens during the whole process could actually help a person because the more you understand, the better equipped you can, can to, to create a constructive lifestyle for you, your family and that child. So thank you very much for giving all this information. And it's been, it's been remarkable. Some of this information, you know, I, I wasn't even aware of, and I, I, I thank you very much for taking the time to, to create your book, Pregnancy Your Way. And you said it can be found on Amazon. People can go to Amazon to find it. That's correct. Yes. And do you have a website that they can go to as well? Well, we're starting now uh, Rural Doc Allen. We're, we, Lindemann, MD. Lindemann MD is another one that's probably going to work a little bit better because we don't okay. have the Rural Doc Allen really up yet. But yes. yeah, those are the, and those are, are the ways to find us. And I really thank you for this opportunity, Stacey. It's been great. You are a wonderful host, and I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you. Oh, thank you so much. It's been a, a pleasure to have you on the show. And thank you so much. We'd love to have you come back. And, you know, once again, thank you so much. This has been a, a great interview and I appreciate everything you've done. And you brought 6,000 lives into this world and quadruplets, <laughs> no less, <laughs> which I'm going to watch that video because I really want to see that. I had three children. They were spaced out a year and a half difference. And I can't even imagine having four at the same time. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You know, dad said that he changed 7,000 diapers a month. <laughs> <laughs> That's devotion. <laughs> That's devotion. That's also very costly. Those, those diapers cost a lot of money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, well, once again, it's been a pleasure, Dr. Allen. Thank you so much. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. All right, have a wonderful day. You too.